All right, y'all, welcome back to another landscape lighting video. If you've been following along, this is a playlist or a series that I'm doing where Volt Lighting, who is a company here in Florida that specializes in DIY do-it-yourself landscape lighting, they sponsored me to do an install here across my entire house. And today I'm actually going over to section two or phase two and starting some of the more in-depth installs. And so today what we're gonna do is I've got two sections here. And just so you guys know, it's not like these videos are that different from video to video to video. It's just when I was learning this, I wanted to watch as many videos as I could on making the connections and how things were thought out and all that. And so I think that's what these videos will be good for as well as you're able to see my progression as somebody that started as a beginner and how I get more comfortable along the way because I know that you will gain that same experience and confidence and I think that'll help you in your install. So with that, let's look at the two sections that we're gonna go over in today's video. Okay, so here is the plan and remember I told you guys you always want to start with a plan I've just hand drawn this and I did this before I ever reached out to Volt that way I had an idea of where all the plants were that I wanted to light up and then I called their customer service to get the official particulars and in the case of these two sections we're going to do today we're going to do this one that runs out here that's 12 gauge wire and then this one that runs all the way back here and lights up the rear on 10 gauge wire so with that let's do this section first here so the first thing I did was install the transformer over here pretty simple job there. You just want to make sure you get it leveled out and have it near a power source so you can plug it in. And then the first run that I did, again, 12 gauge wire is going here against the house. And our first stop, I guess you would say, is right here. I'm going to light up these two Robolini palms. And what's nice, I've mentioned this before, is you have these 25 foot leads on the fixtures themselves. So I didn't have to bring that power wire all the way over here and down and around. I can just keep it where it's at running against the house and then the long lead wires run to here and we do a wire nut connection. So let me show you a wire nut connection here on the corner, which is gonna install or hook up to power these two lights that are lighting up the Robolinis right there. Okay, so let me show you what we got here. We got two fixtures. They're doing that Robolini palm up there. So there's one over there and one over there. And that's what these are. And that's why they're marked in red. And then this is my main line right here. This is 12 gauge wire. It goes all the way back there to the transformer, runs down there and to here. And then this is the main that's gonna continue under the curb and go out to there so I can power the lights that are out there. So you can see the first thing I do is split the wires and I am getting a little better at this now as I've done quite a few of these now and I'm splitting them up. Now this is 12 gauge wire so it's, it's thicker than the 14 gauge that's coming in from the fixtures but it's still not, not too hard to work with. You're going to see down the road working with the 10 is a little bit rougher but this is the first time you guys are going to see me doing a connection using wire nuts that actually has two fixtures going in. Now, you don't really wanna do probably more than two fixtures and use wire nuts because it gets to be a lot inside the nuts that are at least this size. So you'd wanna get some bigger wire nuts or use one of the hubs instead. They make smaller hubs too. But either way, you can do 12 gauge wire in along with two fixtures in the wire nuts that I have and it works just fine. So once I get everything stripped out, you can see I'm trying to hold everything and again up out of the dirt I don't want to get any dirt on this stuff so you just separate them out and one half of each wire will go into each wire nut so the other thing you'll see is I've cut them a little bit longer here and that's because I'm gonna do some wrapping now and this is something I kind of picked up from watching videos online and it just seems like a much better way to do wire nutting especially when you're using more wires in the nut like I am here. So the two mains, I cut those at about three quarter inch and I put those together. You see, I wrap those together there. And then the next thing I do is I cut each of the fixtures a little bit longer, maybe like an inch, maybe even an inch and a quarter. And then I wrap those around the two thicker 12 gauge wires. So I'm kind of pre-wrapping everything so that it's all in this nice tight little package before I even get it into the wire nut. Now I'm, I'm screwing this all the same direction because when you screw the wire nut on, you're gonna screw it in a direction and you wanna make sure that the way that you wrapped everything is in that same direction. Otherwise, when you screw the wire nut on, you're just unwrapping it all. 
So just keep wrapping everything the same direction as you see me doing here and it screws on nice and tight. You'll feel it when it gets everything bound up, it just stops, it won't screw anymore. So now you'll see I'll do the other half again and see if we can illustrate it a little bit better. I'll move the camera for you. So the first thing I do is, is I take the two 12 gauge wires, and again, they're a little bit thicker, and I bind those together. Looks like I got maybe, maybe all, what, not three quarter inch, still a half there. But you can see that the fixtures, the two fixtures, I got these definitely out three quarter, almost an inch. So I wrap each one of those fixtures around those two. Again, same direction every time. Now, I'm sure maybe some electricians in the comments will tell me this is the wrong way to do it, but I've seen people on, online doing it, people that do these types of installs for a living, and it just makes sense to me to have everything nice and bound up prior to putting that nut on there, and then just let the nut feed its way on. Like I said, you'll feel it bind everything up and it won't twist anymore. There we go, solid connection. You can see the two mains there, as well as the two fixtures coming in. This is again daisy chaining because that main is gonna go off now and feed the island. So the last thing I do then, and I say that feed power to the island. And again, the last thing I do is go with a little electrical tape and tape everything up so that it stays together when I finally bury it. All right, and then once those were hooked up, the next connection, I had to dig a small trench across the yard here. I had to actually go underneath the curbing, and right here, I actually burned up my drill. Let the smoke out, as they say. I don't know if that's gonna show in the video, but that was it for my drill, but I was able to drill underneath that curb using that auger, which is the same one I used to plant grass plugs. just let the smoke out. <laughs> so need to get a new drill now, but either way, got that across there under the curb. And again, here's the nice thing about this island. This is a fairly large island with three foxtail palms on it. And then I got a tea plant in the middle that I wanted to uplight. And I only really had to bring the power line right to the edge. And then I was able to bring the the leads from each of those four fixtures right to it. Now, I had a beautiful filming job done. This was, this was one of the best connections I had made using snap connectors. However, once I got done with it, I realized that I had neglected to push record on the camera, so we didn't get that one, but. Okay, well, I just made this beautiful connection here with all of these, and I realized I didn't even record it. So I'm not gonna go back and do it again, but yeah, sorry guys. It's, it was beautiful too, poetic. So now I've got that middle one there, as well as that palm, that palm, and that palm, and it's all hooked up in snap connectors. Anyway, that's that for that section. Tested it, everything looked good, and we're all set now. Now the next one I'm gonna do, and you're gonna see more connections here, is once again started at the transformer. Now this is 10 gauge wire, because it's a really long run, going way back, and it's also got quite a few fixtures on it. So I ran that down the trench, down along the side of the house, and then the first place we're gonna hook up, you're gonna see is right here. This is another Robolini palm. This is just getting one up light. So let me show you. And again, I didn't have to run the power line out to it. I was able to place the light where I wanted it with that long lead go back to and meet the power cord or the, the, the main wire, I guess, the one that's got power to it. So let me show you that hookup now. Okay, so what you're seeing here now, this is 10 gauge wire this time, and that's because this is a long run and it's also gonna have quite a few lights on it, but it's really because of the length of the run. So what you see that I'm holding here in my hand are the two mains. I've already cut them in half. I've got the main that's coming from the transformer, and then I cut that, and so the, the main you see going out there will power down the line, or power the, the next fixtures down the line. Again, this is daisy chaining. So you'll see I'm marking this line in blue, and I wanna just reiterate that. I mark all the lines different colors, so that when I get back up to the box, I can keep that coloring the same. 
so that if I wrap the troubleshoot down the line, I know what's what and what I'm dealing with. So this, this line is blue. And you can see there that I have the fixture there marked in red. Fixtures are always marked in red throughout all of the installations. So get the wires split there now that they're marked in the blue. Now it's time to start stripping wires. And by this time I've gotten a little bit better at it. And I've decided, what I've decided, because this is 10 gauge wire now, it's a lot thicker, that I'm gonna strip off quite a bit more on the fixture there, that 14 gauge, and you'll see. So I can go ahead and get plenty of room to wrap it. So this is my first time really doing any stripping with the 10 gauge wire, but I find that it's actually easier because it's thicker. So I've got a little more than a half inch on the 10 gauge and quite a bit more than an inch on the fixture 14 gauge. And you'll see why I do that in a minute. So the first thing I do is I take the two thicker 10 gauge wires. Again, you just pick half of each one. So I take the two thicker 10 gauge wire and I pre-wrap those and then I come back with the fixture wire which is a lot longer and I wrap that around both of those. And now I have this nice tight little package right here ready to go right into the wire nut. There we go. And you wanna make sure that there's no copper exposed at the bottom of the wire nut. So this one was close, but it definitely made it. And just keep going until it binds up. There we go. Decided to go ahead and cut that one a little bit. It's a little bit too long. So here we go again, two 10 gauge wires. One is the main coming in and one is power going out. Get those pre-wrapped and then come back with the fixture wire and wrap that around both of those. Look at that. See, I'm getting much better at this now as time has gone on. Shove those down in there. And there we go clean connection, lots of schmoo coming out. Great for making it sticky when I go to wrap it up with the electrical tape. So there you go, pretty standard and easy. And then I kept running that power cord all the way back. Now we got two sections back here of uh, up lights. We got the Arika palms that are against the pool here, right against the, the screened in pool. And then I got some that are back here a little bit further. So for these right here, this is a fun connection because I had power coming in, but then I also had to account for power going back out to get the rest of these lights. And so in that case, I could only light up these three, one, two, three, because you have power coming in, you have three lights and then power going out. So let me show you how that connection looked using a snap connector hub. Okay, let me show you what I got going on here. So you can see that this hub, it's got five contacts. That means I can hook a main coming in, then I can hook up three lights, and then I can also have a main that keeps going down there because I have more lights down there that I need to light up. So what I'm getting out of that is I've got a light right down there, right down there, and then I've got one right here, and then I've got one right here. So these three lights are all going into this hub right here, as well as power in and then power out. And so if you look, it's one power in, two, three, four for fixtures, and then five for power back out and going back down the line. And so that's gonna fill up my five contacts on each side. Now I'll tell you right here, this is what I would consider my best hub connection. And I've done quite a few of these now, and I've got this really well organized, not only just in my own mind, but also just for the visuals for you guys. So you'll see here, I get the connectors ready to go, and I actually open all of the snaps ahead of time. How smart that would be, right? Why try to do that when you're holding all these wires that are exposed and you don't want them to drop down in the dirt and all this? No, just open them up ahead of time. So. This is, again, things you start to learn, like logical ways to improve the process as you go. So I got those 
connectors all ready to go. You can see I got the main on the left coming in and the main on the right going back out. And now it's time to strip the wires. And I do pretty good here. I've, I've learned now to finally trust this tool. And you're going to see in the final, final video, because there's another one coming after this one, I get really good at it. Super fast, super easy. Now, I'm not taking as much off here as you'll see. This is 10 gauge wire. And it's the max you're going to be able to use in these connectors. But I'm not taking too much off because you just need to get enough in there for it to snap in. So I haven't even stripped any other wires yet. You see that? Figured this is much easier. So just push it up in there. Up, oh, didn't like that. So retwist. I don't even know. What is that? Quarter inch, barely. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it off a little bit more even. We just need it to get up in there and get snapped in. And again, this is 10 gauge wire. This is the thickest you'll be able to get in there. So it can be a little tough, but just keep working with it until you get a nice, good entry connection. There, I give it that little bit of a pinch up. Boom. Give it a tug. Oh. Let's try again. Nope. So looks like I cut it too short this time. So I'm going to go back to it, strip off a little more, see if we can get it this time. But you notice, see, all the other wires are still laying there, not stripped out yet. So I don't have to worry about those. I'm not trying to hold them all in my hands. Now we get it in there. There we go, it held that time. Now we do the other half. And you'll see the way I wire this is logical too. This is power going out, so I just have it on the far right. You don't have to do it that way. You can put them in whatever order you want. But again, it's just logical for me to keep things straight in my head as I go. This is the power going out, and the power is going out to the right. Like the next few connections I make are down to the right. So. Again, you'll see the 10 gauge wire is not that easy to work with when it comes to getting into these hubs. And I, I told you guys this is the best connection I made. It doesn't look that great <laughs> so far, but you'll see in the next final video, I have to do another one of these. I do much better. So come on, get in there. There we go. Snap it down, give it a little tug. Okay, we're good to go. Look at how clean that looks. Now I'm going to start stripping all of the fixtures. So we got three fixtures here and that's fine because we got, remember we still have to save one slot for the power coming in, which is that other 10 gauge wire marked in blue over there. But now I'm going to put in each of the fixtures. There it is up in there, clamp down. There we go. No copper showing out the bottom. Perfect. What is that? About a half inch. Split it off a little more. Shove it up in there, clamp it down. Good to go. All right, one fixture's in. Let's get the next one. See, everything laid out nice and clean. Second fixture in. Now the third, and the final, this is the power in, this is 10 gauge wire, so this is the one that's going to be bringing power into this hub. Get that all up in there, click it down, good to go. And now the last one. So you can see by laying this out ahead of time and stripping one wire at a time, it just makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. And again, it helps you to stay organized. from. Whereas opposed to before, I would, I would strip all the wires ahead of time, and then I'd have to sit there and hold them all while I was doing this. This makes it a lot easier. Clamp that down. Holds good. All right. So now our snap connectors, our hubs are good to go. I've got half of each so wire. So you can see I have power coming in, one to each side, three lights, one to each side, and then power going out, one to each side. Now, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. I just did them in that order. But there you go. Now I'm going to close these up, and we'll be nice and clean.
All right, I wanna make sure this is understandable. So the connection you just watched, I had main power coming in and then I was able to get one, two, three lights on it and then main power going back out. So I still had to power this light here, one, two, three, and four. And so I had power that I ran right to there and then we're using the long leads, long lead to there, short lead, shorter, you're a little longer lead, little longer lead, and that's another hub connection. And the reason I'm able to get four lights on that one is because I only have to account for power coming in because it's the end of the run. This one back here, I had to leave a slot for power coming in and I had three lights and then power going back out. That's the five because you only get five slots in that hub connector. But with this final one here, I can get four lights because I'm not continuing power on anywhere else. So let's go ahead and watch that connection right now. That's one, two, three, and four. And you'll see I'm getting even better. All right. Now this time I'm at the end of my run. So Here's the power cord. The, the connection we just made is right, right there. And the power cord is coming out of that. And it runs down here. Again, this is all gonna get buried six inches. Runs here. And then it comes to right there. So I've got one fixture. I've got one fixture, two, three. And then there's one back there, four. So you can see right there, I've got those four fixture lines and one power line. And that, so that's five connections and I've got five on each side. So it's just splitting them up and putting them in now. So here we go again, let's look at another hub connector. And I know this is a lot of repetition, but as I've mentioned several times when I was learning this, I wanted to watch this as many different ways from as many different angles as I could. And I think that a lot of you that are trying to get up the confidence to do this will be the same so this is a little different angle now so hopefully that'll help you so again this is 10 gauge, 10 gauge wire coming in now because this is the end of a run I only need power in I don't have to have a slot for power out because this is the end so this 10 gauge wire power coming in will take up one of the slots but you remember you got five slots so I can put in four lights now because I have the extra slots there so that's what this end run is doing and I'll mention again, the 25 foot leads are helpful because I'm able to bring lights from down, you know, these lights from down the line all to this one spot because I got those 25 foot leads on each of the lights themselves. So the first thing again, I'm staying, I'm staying logical here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hook the power in. There we go, one half done. This one seems to be going much smoother because I've learned how to work with that 10, ga 10 gauge wire now. Second one going in. Now there's a little bit of copper exposed there. Not ideal, but it'll work. And now I'm gonna go ahead and strip the wires on each of the fixtures and get those popped in. Now that the snap connectors are done, close them up, tape them up, and then it's time to go hook up the transformer. And so with everything hooked up and working, I'll show you what it looks like now at night for both of these two sections. So, Again, all these videos I'm doing at Christmas time, so. But there it is, they, these are just beautiful. Look at how bright that is with that red. And then we got the green over here on the island with the red down the middle. 
all the way back, red back there, and then you can see way back there. I'll show you those two in a second, but let me just turn them all to the white, which is what it's all gonna look like normally. So I can try to give you a little bit of a view of what it would just normally look like. And I'm gonna turn these down because I had them all the way up. With the white, it's really overpowering. So I just bring the brightness down, which I think is one of the best parts of these. Now I might do different colors during the year for sure. Those on those trees I'll leave as bright as possible actually. So there you can see, it's just a nice subtle up lighting. This is never gonna pick it up with this camera and all the Christmas lights in there, but it's, it's subtle. Look at this, this is really pretty. Look at that, lights them all the way up. Now we can do some, some thinner filters, I guess they're called, to make it shoot straight up the tree and not be as broad or wide. So those are some options I'm gonna play with at the end. But for now, look at this. Just a nice up lighting there on the Robolinis. Now we'll go back here to these. And I'm just gonna go straight to this blue color that I like, because I think it's just beautiful. You wondering what's going on there, bud? What color do you like? I like the blue. Look at that, all the way back. Ooh, that red is nice though. So there we go back here on the Lanai. Lanai. Look at how pretty that is. Now all that all that white that's overhanging, that's from the Christmas lights. So normally this will be a lot darker, but see how it just uplights the uh, Arika's real nice? There, it's from far back. Look at that. That is just beautiful. That's exactly what I had envisioned was that nice uplighting, just a little accent back here. And I actually think I'm messing with this remote there's an even deeper blue that I can get. Oh yeah, that's a deeper blue. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so that's even cooler looking with that deeper blue, purple blue. Wow, that's pretty sweet looking. It's like Miami Vice back here. So yeah, I really like that. Beautiful. Now the ones on the other side have those red for Christmas. And I'm gonna turn these back red and green too. But look at that. That's awesome. All right, y'all, so there you go. There's two more sections and uh, the hardest one is yet to come. So I got one more video coming on installs and then there's gonna be, I don't know, maybe two videos, but for sure one on, you know, the cleanup, the finish work, getting everything tidied up, all of that kind of stuff, you know, cleaning up the wires, final hookups into the, the transformers, all that is coming. But the next one is the, is the most difficult because I had to find a way to navigate that sidewalk rock right there, which you will see I did. So with that, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Subscribe, ask any questions that you have below and uh, I'll see you in the next one.